Yeah, thank you, Ravi, for uh, giving me this opportunity to speak here. All right, thank you. So let me share my, share my screen. Um, Why don't I see? It's okay. Nice to be made host. Um, in order to share screen, is that true? Yeah, you I, might. You might have to make him co-host, Robin. Sure, let me do that. Ah, oh, good. There you go. Screen sharing. Oh, uh, can you see? Yes. Oh, okay, good. All right. That's good. Um, okay. Um, yeah, this is my title, but uh, um, I think I, I'll, I, I, at this moment, I would just focus on local resolution. Uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm about to finish writing uh, the global version. I mean, just for often varieties or for projective varieties, uh, not the general varieties. Um, but until I post uh, uh, the global version, let me just focus on local, okay? Um, but yeah. All right, so the main statement. Um, yeah, and this is uh, uh, um, yeah, it should be true. I, I'm writing, I'm, I, I already finished uh, uh, writing the details for the global version. But I'm still uh, double, double checking everything. Uh, so, but at least locally, there shouldn't be any problem. So, um, yeah, just uh, I have often already or projected already over periphery field, and I should have a resolution. Um, yeah, meaning I have a smooth scheme, smooth scheme X and a projective variation morphism from uh, this new smooth variety onto or original singular variety. Now, uh, I want to emphasize that my approach is totally different uh, from uh, all the previous pro approach. Actually, I'm not familiar with uh, uh, the old approaches other than um, reading um, Colossus' Colossus book um, on resolution singularities. Uh, even for Colossus' book, book, I didn't read all of them. But anyway, yeah, my point is that uh, the Euro approach, it seems to be some sort of algorithm where you introduce uh, some invariance, you develop a blow up algorithm, then you see uh, the invariance improve after certain steps. And since the invariance are bounded, then the algorithm, algorithm terminates. So therefore you get a resolution. Uh, I don't do that, okay? Um, I think that that approach involves some kind of uh, analysis on singularities of X of a given variety. But I don't. I, I, I will never <laughs> analyze singularities uh, until the very end. I found a smooth one. Okay. Now, um, the the approach. My approach is as follows. So, I, first of all, there is a universe that contains arbitrary singularities. Then I blow up the universe and produce a new universe, a very big one where all the singularities are there. So I, I just. Uh, so I don't care about singularity. I, I have universe which is smooth. I blow up this smooth universe to produce a new one. And therefore, I look at the uh, rational transforms of those uh, uh, arbitrary singularity Z gamma, okay? Yeah, just the arbitrary singularity. Then I prove, I prove it in my new, in my new universe, uh, it, is, it, is become, it becomes smooth, all right? So this approach never investigate, investigate the singularities of Z gamma, uh, nor do we care how exactly Z gamma becomes smooth, um, okay? Now this universe is, uh, is uh, provided by Manuel of uh, universality, okay? Um, it, it reads as follows. So any singularity over there appears in a thin Schubert cell of the gross many uh, of, of three dimensional subspaces in a certain vector space E. And of course, Ravi uh, knows more of this than anybody's here. So. Uh, so I'm not going to talk about too much about Manuel of universality rather than just say that the, uh, um, uh, it has uh, all the singularities, uh, contains arbitrary singularities. And uh, this grass money is what the, the universe that I talked about earlier, okay? Now, 
Now let's see um, uh, what are those uh, uh, Z gamma, okay? Uh, remember that uh, uh, the universe contains arbitrary singularities. Uh, in the arbitrary one, let's denote it by Z gamma. So what are those, okay? Um, so we look at this uh, grass manning and we have this Pluker embedding with Pluker coordinates, all right? Now, a super divisor is simply the setting one of the Pluker coordinate to be zero. Uh, a thin super cell is actually an open subset of the closed subscheme of this grass manning defined by, by setting uh, the, those, those uh, plug, uh, sub, certain set of plug variable to be zero, just intersection of uh, some Schubert devices. You get a Schubert cell. And, and you look at, uh, I, I actually you look at the intersections of certain Schubert cells. So it's a rather arbitrary intersection of Schubert cell. Any Schubert cell is intersection of Schubert devices. So uh, a thin Schubert cell, cell uh, it's just open subset of, of, uh, uh, of this set where gamma is, sim is simply just a, a subset of, of all plural variables. You, see, you, ha you have a, all plural variables, you select um, arbitrary subset, and, and uh, you look at the, the intersection of, uh, of the corresponding Schubert divisors. Then a, a thin Schubert cell is simply an open subset in there. Um, but anyway, um, such thin Schubert cell uh, lies in often child. So, uh, I started with a resolution of often uh, sing singular variety. So I can focus, I can focus on often chart. So let's focus on what can often chart where we're setting uh, uh, some index so that the corresponding local variable is not zero. So that's the uh, a fixed often chart that uh, uh, I'll, I'll I'll be using throughout the talk. Okay, so I have a I have a fixed often chart on on the Pluker projective, projective space, and uh, it, it induces the often chart on the grass menu. So that's the chart I'm focusing on, and uh, Z gamma will be uh, the closed sub sub scheme of that often chart. So this is often sub closed sub sub variety of that often chart, and the Schubert cell is open subset of this. The gamma. So I'm going to resolve the gamma, and therefore, uh, I think the last uh, is a block. But anyway, um, I'm going to resolve the gamma, and therefore, the the open subset of the gamma, which is the uh, uh, this thin Schubert cell. Okay, keep in mind that a thin Schubert a thin Schubert cell contains arbitrary singularities, and the thin Schubert cell is open subset of this D gamma, which is a very simple distribution. It's just setting uh, is a plug variable to be zero. Of course, plug, plug if, you, if, uh, if, if you view it as subvarieties over here, then you have a three in the uh, plug, uh, coordinate, uh, plug relations. So it's not that simple uh, if, if you think that there's uh, additional plug uh, relations. That makes the gamma arbitrary singularity, singular, singular. So we're going, to, we're going to solve this. Uh, we're going to resolve this. Um, so, so I, I needed to um, focus on certain uh, defining relations, simple, simplify the relations on the gamma. Okay. Um, I mean, a priori, it, it is defined by those equations and Pluker, all the Pluker relations. But there are too many Pluker relations uh, uh, which are dependent, uh, so we can throw them away. So that's what uh, I will do in the next uh, step. So I focus on a fixed chart. Let's see for simplicity, uh, m equals one, two, three. And that's the, that's the open chart I'm focused on. This is the open subset of, uh, this is often space of the plug, uh, plug projective space. And uh, you, know, you can do, uh, uh, you can homogenize the uh, the, the Pluker coordinates as uh, instead of using P, I'm using X. Okay, and basically it's setting P one two three to be one, and then you get the the call the rest X X A B C. Then you get the inhomogenized uh, coordinates on this often chart. So the gamma then as a 
closed subscheme of this often space will be defined by um, those equations instead of the p not using x because I they're doing homogeneous uh, in homogenize everybody. And those are the inhomogeneous hom, inhomogen, proof of relation. So F is a proof of relation. I inhomogenize it. I use F bar to denote it. So Z gamma will be defined by those. Okay. Uh, in general, uh, I think Z gamma is of this form. And by uh, many of universality, excuse <clears throat> me, and this contains arbitrary singularities. Okay. Um, but, but I don't need all the proof of relations. So I'm going to specify some, uh, um, some uh, special ones. All right. And so I'm going to list uh, me, uh, 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 a set of generators for, for the gamma. So this is, uh, there's a minimum set of proof of relations for, on a chart. Okay, there are simply those, those forms. Okay, first of all, those are those are three terms ones, and also those are four terms ones. So the broker relation are grass many of three subspecies, uh, you know, are either three terms or four terms. It's a polynomial. For the three term ones, they are all these forms. Uh, I'm only look at looking at those forms, uh, those things. Okay, they, they are depending on u and v, um, and not equal to one, two, three. You know, you can write it this way. And also you have the four term ones where ABC is distinct from uh, one, two, three. And they are all this form, okay? So those are the inhomogenized uh, special protocol relation on this chart, okay? It turns out on this chart, they are the generators. They are the minimum set of generators, okay? Uh, the important things, uh, which is very useful, simple, but very useful is that for those proof correlations, they have a leading term. Okay, they are, they are linear here. Okay, the rest will be uh, quadratic. So those they are leading variables. Okay. Uh -huh. All right. So 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 can I just to make sure I'm following so far? So you're taking one of these one of these thin Schubert things, and it's affine. You've you've dehomogenized, mm -hmm. and you're trying to get generators of the algebra. Like you're now you want generators of its spec of something. And you're trying to get gener you, you, and you've got you well you have generators all these x abcs and you're now trying to find some minimal generating set is that the is that what you're and you're using Schubert uh, the relations to do such yeah uh, y y yes uh, on the on this chart I I there are some special uh, proof of relations there are they can be explicitly written uh, in this form. And all of the others will be dependent on those. I throw those away. So there are there are many other proof of relations. Oh, I see. So you're saying this is all about the relations, not the generators. You just want to say that all the relations are generated by things by, those. by these two forms, basically. Yeah, yeah, by these two forms. Yeah. <laughs> so it basically, um, yeah, I'm going to use uh, F, this curly F to, 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 to denote those proof of relations. I don't. Uh, I throw away all the others. On this chart, all the others depend on those. So they, they you know, as as generators, uh, as as generators of um, yeah, sorry. As, so Z gamma is defined by this and all procorrelations. And among all the procorrelations here, I throw throw away the dependent ones. And uh, only keep those, all right. And and there are the there are the defining equation for the z gamma. Okay, so yeah. So now uh, z gamma by throw, throwing away the uh, dependent ones is only defined by uh, equations of this form. So you set x u to be zero, and also those special protocol relations. Um, yeah. So we, in, in fact, if you, if you plug in uh, x, u, those are, those are coordinates to those equations. And of course you get the, uh, an often subspace, okay? Uh, inside the, uh, the, 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 the bigger often space. 
then Z gamma will be defined by those uh, kind of uh, um, truncated uh, proliferation, right? So I have this proliferation. Some variable may be zero. I plug in, so I get uh, you know some sort sort of truncated uh, proliferation. So in that way, uh, uh, Z gamma as closed subspace of this often subspace will be defined by uh, those variations. Okay, so I don't need to, uh, those, but those are uh, kind of very bad relation uh, equations. Okay, no leading term may not have leading terms anymore. But anyway, um, so the, the, you can either think of the gamma in this form or the gamma defined by uh, those truncated relation. And you just, just, just pl plug in those, uh, uh, those variable, setting them to be zero in here. You get those. All right. So, um, so those are, in, 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 I mean, if gamma is arbitrary and the grass many is arbitrary, they can send arbitrary singularities. All right. Um, we do not analyze the singularities of this guy. Uh, what we, but we do uh, make a, a quicker observation that is uh, when all the terms of those vanishes, I mean, it's likely to get a singularity. I mean, it, you, by Jacobian criteria, you see that if, if all the variables, all the terms, uh, in, in, in fact, all the variables uh, in the equation of vanishes, then, then uh, it's very likely that you get a singularity. Okay. And then the simple observation uh, uh, led, led me to believe that if I, at least I should start to remove all of the, those zeros, okay, from, from all the terms here, right? So I get those equations. I see if those are all zeros, I get singularities. So at least I should remove the, thing, the zeros here by, by doing blow up, okay? Um, all right. So the first thing to do is that we want to remove all the zero factors of all the terms in every relation, okay? Um, but to, to achieve this, uh, it, it's, it's, a, it's more workable if we can separate uh, those terms. Instead of, you know, those are these, there are three terms here, there are four terms. If only we can separate them and making them uh, binomial, then it will be easier to remove those zero factors. Okay, by blowing up, we're going to remove the zero factor, making them non-zero. We get an equation where the equation has no zero terms, no zero variables in there. Okay, and that's the minimum thing we need to do. It turns out this is enough. Okay, all right. So, all right. So my my. Actually, could you maybe say that again? Could you just say? So that? my goal is this. Okay, um, I I look at those equations, and I I realize that if every variable in every term is zero, it's likely to get a singularity. So therefore, the minimum thing I need to do is that to remove all the zero factors of all the terms. Okay. But I'll, I'll always specify what I mean by removing. I'm going to factor off these zero factors by doing blowing up. I'm going to remove these zero factors. Okay. Now, it, it, I'll, I'll try try out. I, I tried you know to do it uh, on on the uh, proliferation without doing anything. I, I did that, but it turns out if I separate uh, those terms, then the process becomes much easier. At least at least as far as uh, uh, removing zero factors concerned, okay? So now my goal is this, okay? Keep in mind that my goal is just, uh, I want to remove zero factors. How do I remove it? I'm, I wanted to separate uh, those terms into, into binomials, okay? But how do I do it, okay? All right. Um, well, let's, I'm, let, so I'm going to remove zero factors. Meanwhile, I'm going to separate the terms of the proof of relation, okay? That's my first step. Removing zero factors from proof of relation by first, first step by separating the terms. So I'm writing a proof of relation uh, in, in general this way, okay? And the space form 
the specific form sometimes not important. So I just write it as a PU times PV. Okay. And uh, if I, uh, I take it, I dehomogenize it, then it becomes this. Okay. So it's a P is a product variable, then dehomogenize it, I use X. Okay. I have a bar like this. Uh, how do I separate them? Um, first of all, I introduce a, a projective space for every product variation. And, the, and also linearize this product variation. Uh, product, uh, relation. So, so for associated to any such product variation, uh, I get a projected space with product variables, a physical a homogeneous coordinates corresponding to the term. So I denote the, uh, the ho uh, homogeneous coordinates uh, by this. So this corresponds to the term. For every term, I have a corresponding uh, coordinates. Together, I get a homogeneous coordinates. That's my projected space associated to this uh, uh, projected uh, to, to this program uh, relation. Then it also comes as a linearized program relation. Yeah, the same thing, except that I don't treat it as a quadratic anymore, but it's a linear. Okay, this is a linear variable in, in the home, in the uh, program, in the projected space. Uh, depending on f, okay. Okay, so let me see if I. So you, so you're making you have a new projective space where every binomial in your old x's uh, is no by now any Plucker relation. Yeah, for I have a right. So every Plucker relation, I uh, well then okay. every Plucker relation is a linear relation in these new coordinates in this new projection. Yeah, no, no, this, this is right. just, uh, 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 this is just um, um, a definition, okay? It has nothing, to, has no structure yet. So I'm just uh, now giving me any program relation. I just write down uh, a projected space, okay? Right. This, because are you, are you about to blow up the ideal generated by those uh, monomials that appear inside of the that's right. That's yeah. right. Yeah, that's exactly. Yeah. So, oh, wait. Yeah. Okay. Now, yeah, that's what, uh, I, what I'm going to do, as, as just you mentioned. So, now we construct a local model, but rational to this grass menu, actually, to the chart, focus on the chart. Then, on this lo new local model, uh, the, the defining relation will be binomials. By that, I mean all the terms of procreation are separated. Okay, let's see. Let's see why I'm, I'm saying that. Okay, so this is the blow up I do, but I, I don't use blow up. Rather, I just directly give a, a, a rational map from the uh, from the, uh, the 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 chart to the product of of those projected spaces by sending x u to here. So what was that? What was that again? What was, so what is the right side of that rational map? It's projective, these projective spaces where that's F and those Fs. Can you remind, maybe it was a previous slide that piece where you defined PF? Yeah. So I'm, I'm just saying, I'm, I'm, I'm sending from a Plucker variable, any Plucker variable just to those form. Okay, it's like the canonical map sending that. Yeah. Yeah. That binomial is going to the that linear that new. That's right. Corresponding to that. Yeah. Or rather, I mean, in terms of algebra, I'm sending this. I'm for any coordinate coordinates. I'm sending this to the product. Okay. I mean, if you think of in terms of arbiter, I'm, I'm sending, uh, yeah, the, the coordinates to the product. Okay, so that's a birational map. I look at the uh, 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 the the closure, and this is the uh, uh, a birational model as you know to the the to the chart. Okay, but it is singular in general. So instead of working on this smooth thing. Now I'm working on a singular model, but the singular model is canonically inside this uh, smooth model, very big one. So this is a graph. This is a chart on the Plucker. Uh, often this is often chart on the Plucker projected space. 
with product as with some other operation spaces, okay, corresponding to broker variation. Then inside there, I have a singular Barat uh, model of the grass many. Um, actually, yeah, um, yeah. And you're not making any claims. Via might be horribly singular at this point. Uh, uh, it's a singular. I don't know how horrible it is. Oh, I don't think it's very hard. Yeah, yeah. A priori, a priori horrible. I don't know that. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're, you're, right. you're right. You're right. It's a singular. Uh, it's not nice, but it's manageable. Manage manageable. All right. So then I'm going to calculate the uh, uh, the equation of this Barrational model. Okay. okay, this is a model of Barrational to grass many in, but it's inside this still nice, smooth model, smooth ambient space. Uh, but I need, uh, need to write down the, the generating relations. It is singular, but manageable. That's what, you know, because I can, I can at least analyze uh, to some degree, their, their equations, uh, it's, it's equations. So that's, it's not too bad. All right, um, so by calcul calculating the kernel of this map, okay, just, just sending broker of, no, the projective co coordinates to this product, uh, we, you know, we can find some uh, relations. There are, there, are all there are binomial relations like those. There are binomial relations, I mean, Besides the uh, uh, the Peruca relation, they're all binomials. There are there are these forms. Okay, let me let me tell you that uh, this is just uh, simply. Um, I mean, the first three corresponding to the three term. Um, a Peruca relation. The last one corresponds to the four, uh, the three. The, the for each. Proloquial relation of three terms. I have two, two, two relations. For each three, four term proloquial relation, I have these three relations, binomials. Okay. So at, at least those are the, the equations for my, my, my singular model. Okay. Those are coming from. So the, so the worry, uh, so, so I'm frightened here that there might be more, I buy that, you know, these are equations of the-, of the Yeah, yeah, you're, you're absolutely, absolutely correct. There are many, many more. Yeah, right. yeah, they, that's actually, uh, uh, yeah, but anyway, I, for certain reason, I, I don't know why I ignored them for, for a very long time, because in the end, the other relation not important, but in any way, I shouldn't ignore them. So that's a mistake. But anyway, um, so there are, there are relations corresponding to those first three. There are also binomial relations corresponding to the, la uh, the, the, the this last one, okay? And those are, these are, uh, I'm writing down, uh, I'm writing down over here, okay? And I notice that there are those leading terms here, okay? They're important, okay? Without them, uh, it's hard to deal with um, the multiplicities. Uh, you know, eventually I want the equation to have some square free property in, in, in order to make conclusions over P. So those, then those leading variable become very important. The, the, they led me to control the multiplicity. Eventually I get some sort of a square free statement. But anyway, um, so there are, there are, those are the relations coming from the uh, broker relations. They are binomials. And by this, by this, I mean, I separate the terms because there are, for binomials, it's very easy to, 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 to factorize the, uh, by blowing up uh, to factor out zero factors. If I have zero factors or two, I just uh, do a blow up, I factor it out and zero factors become, uh, eventually all the zero factors will become. But, Actually, yeah, I realize I, I'm confused by what, what do you mean by zero factor? I was going to ask. Just that. zero, just, just vanishes at some point. Okay, okay. Yeah. If it's, it vanishes no point, nowhere on a chart, then it's not zero, where, zero factor. Okay. All right. So on the new model, I have those relations. There are, there are the relations I focus on. I, I, therefore, I call many relations. Okay. And, um, yeah, notice that because of leading term, actually you have, uh, they're distinct, okay? This is, uh, 
this is not the two terms, there's no distinction. There are the distinctions. You can call it one plus the other minus. Those are the plus terms, those are minus terms. They are dis distinguishable. Okay, but there are many more, many other relations. So there are many relations which are listed there, they're important. There are other, I call residual. And also there are additional binomial relations I call quotient type. Okay, there's a, there's, there's a reason I call the quotient type, but it will be in another paper, but anyway. Uh, there are also, of course, those linearized local variation. And the first one, the last one, the main relation, the linearized protocol relation will be the most important one. And those one, those relations eventually will become dependent. Okay, in the, in, over here, you know, every relation uh, is needed to define this uh, uh, VM, the Barashna model of the grass mining of that chart. But uh, after I blow up, I can show that the two in the middle will be gone, okay. So let me tell you what is the residual one. The residual one are those, okay? They, they don't have a leading term, leading word, okay? Anything that doesn't have a leading variable, I call it residual, okay? Uh, they're, they're not, these two terms are not distinguishable. And also there are binomial of, of, uh, of, uh, of quotient type, which only involve those, uh, homogeneous coordinates is no plural variables. Okay, those are, remember those are the homogeneous coordinates of the uh, PF, okay. The, the protected space associated with F and they, they only involve those, okay. So I call this quotient type, yeah. anyway. Um, so there are residual one, quotient type one, and the main one. The main one has a leading term. Residual one does it. There are additional one that, that doesn't involve local variable. Okay, the main binomial and residual binomial involve both local variable and and, and this uh, homogeneous coordinates. Um, quotient one doesn't uh, doesn't involve local one. Anyway, um, those are all the relation plus the linearized local relation. Okay. All right, so I'm going to give name, right? I have a main binomial where everybody has a, a leading variable, residual one, quotient one, and linearized one. The first set and the last set are important. But, uh, but the, 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 uh, the two in the middle are not important in the end. Uh, during the process, uh, they are important. We have to deal with it, okay? Um, yeah, this is RF is, remember the ambient scheme. Okay, oh, okay, I've written here, the RF, yeah. It's just uh, the often space and then it take product with those uh, projective, uh, projective spaces associated to the local relations. Okay, this is ambient space. VM is a singular variety inside there and has some, it has those sort of equations, okay? Now I'm going to start to blow up to removing zero factors. Okay, um, there are distinct, uh, uh, different uh, uh, variables. Okay, those plural variables, I call it pi variable. There are those um, uh, homogeneous uh, qualities here, and I call the row variable. Okay, they get the, those uh, we get a pi divisor, row divisor. Okay, there are these. As initially, I have these two kind of uh, variables, okay? So now I'm starting to process of re removing zero factors. Whenever a variable vanishes at some point, it's regarded as a zero factor, okay? But, but the process is a, a subtle. Uh, I'm going to, I needed to, I needed to control equations. So I, I can't just do the arbitrarily. So I, I, I divided into, um, three sequences, okay? I call it the theta sequences, P sequences, and then this, um, what is that? Um, F sequences, okay? Now, in that, you know, this is a sequential blob, so I needed to make, I, take, I need to take an order, first take an order of the plural relation. 
Some order are important, some order are not, okay? Um, but anyway, uh, this order is not, uh, uh, it, it, it's not arbitrary, but, uh, but there are some, uh, uh, there, there, there are some uh, choices that are not important there. But anyway, we can order it, okay? And um, so first of all, we order those uh, parochial, uh, parochial variation, special parochial variation, I call the primary parochial variation. And remember that those, those have leading variables, okay? Everybody has a leading variable. The one without leading variable, you cannot distinguish any term, th those will be gone, they, they, are, they are dependent. Um, and also then uh, we can also order the min binomials so that they're compatible with this. All right, so anyway, so I'm not going to go into detail, but anyway, there are two orders. I, I'm ordering the parochial variation, then I order the min binomials. So I'm giving an order of those also. Yeah, order them and in the, in the, in the comp so that compatible with all the parochial relation. All right. After I order them, I can deal with the uh, each equation one by one. All right. So uh, yeah, this is a, just a reviewing. This is the main binomials. They have order. Uh, the way I wrote this, this is the order actually for giving you the way this is the order. So I'm going to deal with this, that, and so on one by one. All right. Now S blow up. Okay. The first thing is S blow up. Uh, um, remember that I have a pi, I have this pi divisor, I have this uh, row divisor, right? And uh, because of this leading variable here, the first step I only block this, sorry. Uh, um, I only block the x, uh, what's comma so here? I think it's gone. Okay. Hmm. still stay there, but anyway, I have this X1 UV and then this term here, it appears in, er in everybody here, one UV and X1, two, three, one UV, okay? For one parochial relation, this, uh, each row uh, is a, uh, comes from one parochial relation, all right? So this here, this is here, and this two, this also appears over here. So the first thing I don't do, uh, um, blow up uh, according to any fixed equation. Rather, I fix I fix the whole parochial variation, and I blow up I blow up this I U V equals zero and this equals zero. And for the three for the three term one, you see x a b c and x one two a b c. This has it, has this one and this one. So I do them together. So this S blow up uh, does not only deal with, uh, does not focus on any individual main binomial, rather a set coming from a fixed uh, parochial relation. So I blow up those, okay? And of course has order. Then the first sequence is simply, I blow up those guys in the order given, okay? And then they produce this, uh, this sequence blow up. Okay, I'm doing ambient blow up. This is smooth blow up. Okay, this is a, you know, this is intersection of two uh, coordinates variables. So this is smooth, and I, I give order. Uh, I mean, they intersect ne neatly, uh, may not be transversely, but yeah, since I have order, you know, I, I, I nevertheless I produce a smooth a sequence of smooth blow up of the ambient space. Okay, and of course, it induces uh, this. Uh, uh, sequential uh, blow up on, on the uh, uh, on the on the model. Okay, this is uh, the, bar the singular Barrett model. Okay, uh, the first one I, I I I just this is the same thing. This one and this one the same thing. Okay, just different notation. So that's, they have induced blow up. Okay, then um, I have the reason I do this is because it has a nice property. Okay. The first nice property is that all the re residual binomial after this blow up will become dependent. They can be thrown away. Okay, the residual one you, you can prove now they become dependent because of, of this blow up. Secondly, um, 
Um, I mean, uh, remember that uh, this this one is the row divisor. It has a proper transform in a, in a, in a, it have proper transform in this in, over here. And now it doesn't inter intersect uh, with this anymore. Okay, it cannot be zero. In, in other words, this this variable cannot be zero. So it achieves two things. The first block, it, it, it makes residual binomial uh, dependent. So I never need to worry about them anymore. Secondly, I achieve that this variable becomes nice, becomes a nice singular. Okay, it never vanish. Uh, this is a vanishing locus. And this variable never become never vanish over here. So the first set of blow up so that I can throw away residual ones. Okay, the, the, the quotient type of one still stays, but those variables be, become then zero. Uh, this can be proved. All right. All right. Now I'm doing uh, 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 p blow ups. Okay. Uh, this is a, we continue to remove zero factors. I can I can I can write down the uh, uh, proper trends of a binomial. Since it's binomial, it is easy, rather straightforward. I mean, notation would be mass. Okay, I need when you when I need to divide up some sort of uh, 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 nice uh, notation to denote uh, uh, to record the change of uh, equations. But nonetheless, because it's binomial, it's manageable. So we continue the process to remove zero factors of the proper transfer of the main binomials. Okay. Um, I, 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 did, I did not mention too much about the uh, linearized procreation. They are because they are easy, easy to do it. All right. Now we work on we focus on each fixed main binomial, starting from the very first one. Okay. The first main binomial is this. Okay. Is plainly just this main binomial. Remember that after the first round of blow up, the so called S blow up, and this has become non singular. But nonetheless, in this round of blow up, I don't deal with row variables. I don't deal with this. Neither do I deal with this. Okay, I only focus on this plural variable, pair variables. Do the are they still uh, uh, zero or not? I mean, in general, they are. They they have when they, they they vanish somewhere. So, so I pick a zero factor. I call zero factor because they they, they vanish somewhere for the pair. I don't pick uh, the row variable. I don't pick this guy because it never vanish. I pick this guy because sometimes it I don't pick this guy for good reason. I don't pick them. I only focus on the these uh plural variables. Or I call pair variables because they are they they all they already become. Uh, they 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 already uh, I mean there are proper transforms already so uh, but anyway let's call pair variable because they're they are not the original plural variable so for every term I pick a zero factor but I do not pick a row variable so in this simple case I only have two choices this guy this this guy and that okay this is very simple because it's the first equation and this the, the potentially they are zero I mean they can be zero somewhere. So I have two centers. They are smooth centers because they are the coordinate variables. And uh, they have order. This is the first, the second, then I can blow up, okay? So we can blow them up and, and to get our first uh, blow up in the, in the sequence of, I call P blow up, okay? I call P centers, P blow up. Then we'll move on to the next equation. Next equation has this form, but notice that the, this variable one, two, four, all already appears in the first word, first equation. So one, two, three, one, two, four also appears in, in the first equation. Therefore, when you calculate the uh, proper transform, and this variable may become exceptional prior parameter or may acquire a exceptional, exceptional parameter. Okay, so the equation changes. This one may become uh, a, a, a data I call the um, uh, exceptional parameter, uh, or, or you may have a multiplication of of a zeta uh, over here. So the equation, uh, the proper transform of, of the second equation uh, becomes a little bit more involved, but not too bad. Okay, um, 
So there is an additional zero factor in the proper transform P2 fold. This is the exceptional parameter. So now, then the P center is, I'm going to select again. Uh, from each term, I select the zero factor, but not the row variable, never the row variable. I select either the pi variable or pi variable or exceptional variable. I just select a pair. And, and then I get the set P centers with respect to two, four, five. Uh, yeah, there are more in this case already. But nevertheless, I can give order, I blow them up. This is for second one. All right. Then I move on to the next one and repeat it above. Okay. Uh, keep in mind that the, for later equations, there, there are very bad accumulations of exceptional parameters. Okay, there are, so the, the blob is huge. So, ineffective and huge. So now I, I let me explain to, to you the notation here. Uh, mem binomial. Okay, so you know this. This is just uh, a mem binomial. Mem binomial. Th th therefore, my I, my 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 equation is in, is indexed by Kato. Then the mu is not wrong because you know in, in later equations because those uh, exceptions were accumulated and there are the accumulation is uh, maybe in a bad way so that some exponent can can appear. So so. Uh, uh, you have, let's call it a section of prime, prime epsilon. I have epsilon square, epsilon cube. Those may appear in some term. So that if when I select the factor, I can only, if I have an epsilon square over there, the first, when I first blow up, I can only select epsilon, not the epsilon square, because I need a smooth blow up. So I only select epsilon. So now I only, only remove the factor, the zero factor once, but this, the, the, the epsilon, still stay there, so there are still zero factor. So I need to do more. Therefore, that's, that's why I, I, I have a run here, but not for the very first field. You see, you see that when I, when I do the first equation, there are no square here. When you do once, they're done. They are, they, they, yeah. But I think for the second one, same thing. But the later one, no, they, are, they are become more complicated. But nonetheless, uh, even have I have positive exponent epsilon to certain power a, then I can still um, keep doing, keep removing the factor, and after certain after certain steps it become gone. And the last one, as I just simple simply denoted the step. Okay, given fix a uh, proper transform proper transform of of a main binomial, uh, I just select the zero factors from. Uh, the plus term and, and the minus term, select the one, I do a blow up, and then there's a step, <laughs> yeah. But I need a several rounds. And this one states, uh, stands for the um, uh, corresponding main binomial. All right, so I, then I can blow up. Okay, I finish this P round, okay. Now this round removes a lot of zero factors. Okay, and in fact, they remove, uh, yeah, remove, yeah, uh, but, but not the row variables, okay? And because the way I do, the, 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 um, yeah, this is, you know, the, because I don't deal with the row variables, the binomial equation of quotient type is still under control. So I can see something about them. The reason, because I never do, I never do it. So th therefore I have statement. I need it. Uh, I, I need a square free statement. So therefore, uh, because I haven't deal with them yet, so I can see something about this quotient type equations. Because that's the reason I do people up without touching the row variables. Okay, I need a statement on this here. Uh, after I down, every, every time after I down, I need to state certain property, properties I need on those. Okay, then I can state, uh, 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 I make a statement on the on the quotient type equations. Remember, re residual equations are gone. Okay. Now, now after the p blow up, I have the last step f blow up, and this this one, uh, it, we just do arbitrary 
removing real factors. I look at that, I focus on any equation, just focus on any equation, starting very first one. I blow up all the uh, zero factors. So I, for every term, I pick a zero factor. Every term, I pick a zero factor, uh, regardless of what, what kind of variable they are, I pick a pair. So there are a lot of pairs, okay? One from uh, each fact, each term of the binomial, a lot of pairs, okay? I, I, there are certain ways to order them. Then I can do blow up. Okay, this is very similar to P blow up, but the P blow up doesn't touch row, row variable. But now I touch every variable. I do the same set, same step of blow up, picking zero factor. Uh, I get a center and uh, and uh, I make an order. Then I have the sequential blow up. Okay, all the factors are are are, are involved. And, and again, the middle one is wrong, and because uh, it, it is due to the uh, um, ex excessive accumulation of uh, of those exceptional parameters. Now, uh, now finally, uh, my main binomial will take this form, okay? You know, and any step will take this form. There are, those are the original form. Those are the uh, exceptional parameters that are accumulated there. But after I blow up, the, the, then I'll take a prop trans of none of them become zero, okay? Um, yeah, this is easy to show. I mean, the, the process has to terminate because every time you do proper terms, you see that either this term or that term, the degree goes down. So eventually there's no zero term. If I have still have a zero term, I pick it up. I pick the pair, I blow up, okay? Either this degree or that degree uh, goes down. So they, they, they terminate. Eventually, my, I still see this proper transform, but they have no zero terms anymore, okay? So I achieve my goal. All the ter zero term are, are gone. Meanwhile, because they are, I, I'm doing things in a control, controllable way, I can make statement about my equation. Basically, square free statement on this term. All right. So I have I have this sequence here. Okay. Remember the S sequence. This sequence remove removes this zero factor and also uh, making all the residual binomials dependent. Okay, this is the first sequence. And this one, I only blew up this kind of variables, all right? So that I can make statement, square free statement on the quotient type of binomials. And the last one, I plainly just removing all zero factors. Okay, this is a three round of blow ups. Of course, uh, and the, the, the top row are smooth blow up. And then uh, and this is the uh, induced blow up on the singular model. Okay, the, the this last one is what we 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 need. Okay. All right. Now let's look at the proper transform. Right. The, 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 that, that's what I do in the universe. Now I look at the, I fix any gamma scheme. This is containing this thin super cell. See, remember our goal is to resolve uh, this guy when when it is singular. And integral. So, 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 so maybe there. Can I ask? So, I'm going to follow this through. You got this thin Schubert cell, and we're yeah. going to take a particular point of it where it's singular that we're going to follow through and watch it get better. Right? Does that? No, 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 no. I never, I never look at the singular point of this cell okay. again. No. What if, what if the entire component is non-reduced? For example, what if the thin Schubert cell? No, right. I, I, uh, I, I think there, there should be some statement, but uh, I assume that the gamma is uh, integral. I only, I only focus on the integral ones. Okay. Uh, I, I believe, I believe uh, even for uh, uh, reducible ones, it, it is resolved. It, they just become separated. You know. But, uh, but my, I don't need those. I'm, I, my, in my paper, I only, I only focus on integral the gamma. So for any integral, the gamma. Let's look at how it becomes trans prop transform. Mm -hmm. I mean, if the gamma is a reduced or or, or a reducible, uh, I believe if needed, some statement can be made, but uh, but need some work. So I don't deal with them. But, but but somewhere you must use that hypothesis that it's integral, I guess. 
Yeah, yeah, in my in my in my proper transform, it's here. So I'm, I'm I need to comp compute the proper transforms. In there, I need the gamma to be integral. Yes. If it's not integral, uh, make my construction. Uh, yeah, I need to do additional work to 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 do the proper transform. To, to, to do to, to do the operational transform rather. Okay, I I like to know um, the 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 problem. So basically, I focus on the integral of the gamma. I look at the operational transform. The problem is that when you know initially the gamma is just uh, a, a sub scheme over here, a closed sub scheme here, and if the blow up, uh, if the uh, if the gamma is not contained in the blow up center. I simply take the uh, operational transform. So over there, I don't really need any assumption. However, uh, there are cases where the, the gamma may be totally contained in the center. So I need to take a operational slice. And to do that, I think uh, uh, I need to assume that the gamma is integral so that things work. OK. <clears throat> yeah, it's a little bit of uh, subtlety over here. Uh, to construct the birational uh, transform in the blow up. And basically, uh, the birational transform uh, is it, it, just constructed by taking proper transform, or once when, when, the, uh, when the blow up center contain it, um, I, I, I look at the uh, total transform, I take a certain birational slice. Okay. Um, the start of the day here. No, um, when I take the birational transform of, of those Z gamma, I need the equation. I need the equation. I can, I can, only just, I can not only just take a birational transform and, or take a birational slice without equation, I need the equation. And th that's, that's why uh, you get those reducible ones. Possibly, re uh, I get this z gamma z. I, those are the proper transform for each one. You know, for the barrage, for the singular model, I have a barrage transform. Transform for this blow up, as a blow up, theta blow up, as for the barrage transform. Each one have barrage transform. They have equations. They have explicit equations. Then it contains. Excuse me. It contains an irre irreducible component rational to my original one. And, and this is where I need the gamma to be integral. So I have an irreducible co component rational to my original one. And I, I, I don't have equation for this guy. So that's why I do have equation of a bigger one. So they may be reducible. I, may, I don't know, may have a, some other, may be very bad. But anyway, at least it has a component rational to this. So in the, in the end, I'm going to work on this because they have explicit read. Each, each of these are called the rational transform and they have explicit relations, uh, equations. And they contain uh, irreducible component, component uh, rational to my original one. All right. Because I have those uh, relations, uh, explicit relations, um, um, I can calculate as as a it's a Jacobian. Okay, the calculating Jacobian of the main binomial or the linearized binomial of the proper transform, we can prove that the generates everything, and the, the the residual ones are already throughout, and and the equation of quotient type will become dependent after showing this generate. Okay, and. So, um, yeah, I'm already over time, and I'm just saying that, that you know, eventually, because I have, you know, for each political variation, I have this, uh, uh, I have certain main binomials, okay? This, this one corresponds to main, bi main, bi main binomials associated to the first equation, main binomials associated to the second equation. Uh, I have explicit, explicit form of those equations, the linearized one and the memoir. So I can compute the Jacobians. 
no zero terms anymore. I can see that they take this form, and because of no zero term, they are they are max they are all in maximum range, and and therefore that's the conclusion. Actually, uh, uh, th this uh, this this final Brashton transform will be smooth everywhere over prime fields, and uh, uh, in particular the irreducible component, the main irreducible component now become a com connected component. I mean, the competition is local. I, I, you know, I show this is a smooth, therefore every component is smooth. And therefore this produces a resolution. So is, is it, is this looks actually, um, it, so what you have is a fairly, is, it, is an explicit algorithm, not, as you say, it's not an algorithm to resolve any singularity period, but it's, uh, but it's- Algorithm a, on the universe. Yeah, right. But it, but it is an algorithm to resolve components of the thin Schubert cells, which you could then use. So, so in particular, this looks like this would- what in, 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 Yeah, in a sense that I don't, I never introduce the environment. I never analyze the singularities. Right. But at the and end, I, I just have a process. I have an algorithm to do blow ups. In the, after my blow up is done, then I, then I just uh, prove that uh, every, everything, all the singularities, all the z gamma become smooth. Hey, Yihu, can I just ask, since, since this process is, seems to be sort of a universal resolution of Schubert varieties, um, do you think there's any chance that there's some sort of um, you know, modular interpretation in the sense that, you know, Schubert cells are parameterizing three, in your context, three planes that are in some sort of special position. Can you interpret the various moves you do, blow ups as, you know, adding data or some sort of modular thing saying that what you're really, what your smooth guys are doing is they're parameterizing three planes along with some extra data of some sort. Um. It might, but I doubt it. I, I doubt it uh, because of uh, this uh, uh, main binomial thing. Um, I mean, if there's a global version, okay? Uh, there's, a, there's, you know, here I focus on chart. There is a global version, uh, but but uh, in that global version, uh, the blob is slightly different. And then that, that might be a, a modular interpretation, but if if I focus on this chart, I don't know. I, I, I doubt. I, I think I think it's very hard to give a modular interpretation because I focus on chart. The fact I focus on chart. If I don't focus on chart, I just I just do the similar similar, not exactly the same, but similar blow ups on on the grass many. There, there will be another paper, so I'm doing the uh, resolution of the Herbert quotient as well. That will be global blow up, and there, there, there might be a modular interpretation. A similar blow up, but 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 not focus on each individual local relation. I think that's that will probably destroy uh, any modular in uh, in the uh, modular interpretation because I focus on. Uh, I mean, in a sense, if you if you had the modular interpretation, you can get rid of all the intermediate steps, right? You could just uh, yeah, yeah. just have that final step and then see that the moduli problem was sort of right. had smooth deformations, like compute sort of deformation space right. to see yeah. it was smooth. But, but I think the, 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 the projected space of PF, P sub F, that's hard to deal with. I blow up, you know, you use a lot of P sub F. Uh, I mean, if you're anything is modular, it shouldn't, Focus on too much on individual local relation. I have a global version which doesn't focus on individual local relation. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, what you said may be true. Okay. But anyway, um, uh, I'm over time. I'm sorry about that uh, because of this computer uh, troubles. I mean, Zoom trouble. Anyway, but anyway, I have this uh, huge sequence of blow ups. I mean, it, it does a lot of purpose. The, uh, the most important purpose is removing zero factors, okay? So then after my final main binomial proper transfer of main binomial relations, I don't see any zero terms, okay? But meanwhile, this is a continuable blow up. 
I can make statement on the, on the uh, uh, I can make some square statement on the term. Basically, I'm claiming that the, this leading term is square free, okay? Because it's continuable uh, uh, blow up. And because I have leading term, if I don't have leading term, uh, I don't. I don't think I can make a square free uh, statement. And that's really uh, the thing that uh, accuse, accusing me command some time. Okay, but anyway, yeah. Eventually, uh, that's also eventually why I focus on the chart because I have a leading, I have a leading term um, to to allow me to make statement. But but the one invariant you really do seem to have a hold of is the dimension of this component. Right, because as soon as you have your leading equations, you know the dimension. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's all, yeah. That's already, right. it's striking. Already, that's like not so obvious how you would. Uh, that, uh, that you're right. That's already striking. That's uh, that, that you have the dimensions of thin Schubert cell. Because that's not obvious how you get the dimension of, thin Schubert, of that thin Schubert cell. So that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, then, then this is also needs a lot of construction. Okay, uh, taking rational slicing, uh, taking rational transform. It's not just proper transform. Yeah. Okay, it, 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 but it's a rational transform. And the things that I need the equation, as meanwhile I need is rational. It's horrible, right? So, so computationally, it's going to be horrible to. Right. Yeah. 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 And and eventually, I make a ten page of calculation of Jacobi's. You know, uh, to take this form, and this is not too bad. Okay, once you follow, it's not too bad. Okay, but anyway, it, 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 a little bit over 10, 10 or eleven page composition of Jacobians. Then I can make a statement that uh, only main binomial and the linearized proliferation matters. Okay, don't care the theory of all others. All right, and this also meanwhile, this matrix led me to say, you know, I have a resolution. And the, 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 the rest is this general argument. Okay, I, I'm, I'm learning a lot during this process. Okay, I'm, I'm still learning, but anyway, yeah. So all I said before is really doing things over Z because money off of universality, you know, it's over Z. Yeah. Okay, Robin knows more than anybody. But anyway, yeah, then for general field, uh, I'm, learning, I'm learning that, that you, can, you can spread out other schemes and, uh, and there's a certain induced, uh, uh, resolution over there, okay? And uh, I, I think uh, there are areas in my, <laughs> in my uh, archive preprint, preprint, I, I'm, yeah, I, I'm, 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 uh, I'm update, I'm, I'm finished, I'm, I'm about to finish the update on my paper. So all the areas will be corrected, okay? Great, so, so now might be a good time to uh, to everyone can unmute themselves and thank you for uh, for a groundbreaking and exciting talk. But